Toby and I have the great pleasure of doing the first of, I think, about 16 webinars that we're doing throughout this year with the Department for Education in South Australia. It's just fantastic to see that the department is getting on board with the Adobe products and more and more schools are seeing the value in them and getting access to them. And our job for this session is to give you an overview of what is the Adobe Creative Cloud. And we're going to specifically then focus on one of the many, many apps, and that's called Spark Post, which is a very simple, easy to use desktop publishing tool. So that's our aim for this webinar. I'll be recording various chapters. We're doing the introduction chapter now, chapter one. And uh, so that if you look back, you don't have to look back at the whole webinar. You can just look back at uh, the sections that you are most interested in. Just a reminder for those who are with us live to make sure that your microphone and your cameras are muted because we are recording and we will be sharing this with other teachers uh, later on. And let's have a look. I did ask, pose a quiz question at the start just before we went live to air with the recording. And that quiz question was, what three what two applications were used to put together a little video that I just played that explained the Blue Jeans room environment that we're in. And it was an animated video and uh, it involved, well, it actually involved about four different applications to put it together. Let's see the different results. Melanie's saying character app with a question mark and video. Melanie, you are very, very close, but I can't give you the, uh, the prize. Not that there's necessarily a prize here, but uh, Louise is saying Premiere. Well, that's true. That's one of the two. I did use Premiere Pro to put the whole thing together, to sort of stitch the whole video together. It is my favorite video editing application, but it's not a video application that you can just learn straight away. There is a fair bit of a learning curve to, to reach Premiere Pro, which I would recommend if you're into video production, look at Spark Video, look at uh, Premiere Rush as a fantastic tool that's just a, a lot more powerful than Spark Video, but nowhere near as complicated as Premiere Pro. So, so far, we haven't got the right answer. Let's see how Rachel went. Premiere, yes. Photoshop, yes. Character Animator, oh, she got all three of them. Well done. Oh, I wish I had my sound effects ready because I'd normally give you a big round of applause. I might, might set them up later on. But hey, virtual round of applause for uh, Rachel. Well done, Rachel. So Premiere was used to stitch it all together. Photoshop was used to actually create the puppet initially. And then Character Animator was used to animate the puppet in real time. So that puppet was actually animated thanks to the webcam. As I was moving my head, the puppet was moving its head. As I opened and closed my mouth, the puppet was opening and closing its mouth. As I spoke, my voice was being recorded, but my lips were being synced with the mouth. My head was moving and I was able to move one of the limbs with my mouth. So all of that animation was done in real time. That's why it took so little time to put that animation together. So congratulations, Rachel, I'm very impressed. Uh, she's also said Edge Animate. Well, no, didn't use Edge Animate. Uh, and Illustrator Photoshop. Illustrator could have been used there, uh, who's it, Shirley? Shirley, I could have used Illustrator to build the puppet. I needed an application that had multiple layers and Photoshop would do that, Illustrator would do that. So I could have used Illustrator, but in this case it was Photoshop. Rachel saying, missed the video just to guess. Oh, well, Rachel, that's even more <laughs> impressive. <laughs> Alana saying Adobe Animation. Um, there isn't a product called Adobe Animation, but there's a product called Adobe Animate. And I could have used that, but it would have taken hours and hours and hours because it's a frame by frame animation tool. And uh, I do know how to use it, but I just didn't have the time. Like many teachers, we don't have the time to be building animations with something as professional as Adobe Animate. Doing something really quickly with digital puppets in Character Animator was just brilliant. So well done, Rachel. All right, so that's the end of chapter one. I'm gonna stop recording. In the next chapter, we're gonna look at an overview of the Adobe Creative Cloud. Are on the Adobe Creative Cloud and Spark Post. I'm gonna share my screen and you can see our opening title slide, overview of the Adobe Creative Cloud, apps in education, and then making digital posters and graphics in seconds, literally seconds with Spark Post. There's my name, Dr. Tim Kitchen, Senior Education Specialist Adobe, and my email address if you want to get in contact with me about anything that we cover or anything else that relates to Adobe in education, kitchen at adobe.com. 
Our next session, by the way, I'll do a little promo now, I'll do another one later, is on Thursday the 4th of March, making great videos in minutes with Spark videos. That's going to be a session well worth looking forward to. This is the Creative Cloud. There's 22 different applications that are available in the Adobe Creative Cloud. And I don't expect you to read all of that information. Just wanted to give you an overview here of how many there are and kind of what they do. But I'm going to go into a little bit more detail soon. I tend to be spending most of my time with these four applications with teachers all over the Asia Pacific region. The Spark tools, there's three of them, Spark Post, Spark Page and Spark Video. They have become an absolute revelation for teachers around the world because they're so simple, so easy and so basic to introduce you to the world of Adobe. And literally, we're going to be learning how to create a poster in seconds today and just so you don't need to have any graphic design experience or anything. That's the, that's the beauty of the Spark tools. Premier Rush, I mentioned that earlier, is a fantastic video editing solution, much more powerful than Spark Video, as I said. Uh, Multi-layered, you can have four layers of video, four layers of audio on your phone. It's like unbelievable. iOS and Android on your tablets, on your brow browser, sorry, not on your browser, on your laptop or your desktop. It's a, it's a brilliant tool to get to know. Character Animator, I mentioned earlier, I showed you an example, not on the recording, but uh, before the recording. And Adobe XD, it's amazing how popular that's become. It's a way of prototyping applications, uh, sorry, prototyping apps. Basically, you can design an app for your phone or for your tablet device or design a website if you want to for your laptop or your desktop. And you get a fully function prototype of that app on your phone. So what I love seeing is when students are asked to do a project, and um, the teacher says, and I want you to do a PowerPoint presentation. And the kids switch off straight away because they've been using PowerPoint since they were one years old. It's lovely to give them some alternatives. And Adobe XD is a fabulous alternative because the kids are then actually wireframing and, and, and designing an app and then uh, putting it into prototype mode, displaying that app on the big screen. So instead of a PowerPoint presentation, it's an app that they're working with to present what their learning was. That's a creative way to construct your learning and to present what you've been learning, a creative assessment tool. Uh, that's not what it was designed for, but that's what teachers are using it for. It was actually designed as a design thinking tool for app designers. And it's incredible, it's an amazing tool, but teachers are taking it and, and students are using it incredibly well. I'm going to play a quick video. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. And this video is going to give you an overview of the Adobe Creative Cloud in education. I'll just get that warmed up in any second now that video will start. And um, I'll show you the link to this video if you want to have a look at it later on as well. Adobe's industry standard tools like Photoshop, Illustrator, Premiere Pro, After Effects, Animate, InDesign and Dreamweaver are vital for media, IT and arts educators in K-12 and tertiary classrooms across the globe. But these days there are a growing number of simple to use tools like Spark Video for quick and simple video stories, Spark Post for digital posters and social graphics, Spark Page for quick web pages that Adobe will host for you, Aero for augmented reality experiences, Acrobat DC for PDF manipulation, Adobe XD, a design thinking tool for designing, prototyping and sharing the designs of apps and websites, Dimension for making 3D models, Rush for powerful video editing on your mobile and desktop devices, Fresco, which is the ultimate drawing tool for the iPad and Surface Pro. Photoshop for the iPad. The new Photoshop camera. Character Animator for real-time animation. The new Illustrator on the iPad app. And more. 
These apps are being used by maths and science educators, English and humanities teachers, law professors, health and physical education teachers, and in any K-12 or tertiary curriculum area that is looking to add an extra level of engagement and creativity into the learning and teaching process. Get to know these apps through the Adobe Education Exchange, which is getting close to 1 million members across the globe with a wide variety of new, free, online self-paced courses and resources for educators. The Adobe Education Exchange is made by teachers for teachers. It's a great way to learn how and why Adobe tools are so beneficial in all curriculum areas. It is also the gateway to the new Adobe Creative Educator program, which is a badging program designed for any educator in any curriculum area and level. You don't have to be an Adobe expert to be an Adobe Creative Educator. We do hope you enjoyed this session. Please do share what you learned today with your colleagues and wider education networks. Use this QR code or link if you would like to follow up anything that was presented during this session or if you would like to join the Australasian Adobe in Education monthly news update. Enjoy this session. And I'll be sharing some of those links a little bit later too, in case you miss them. But the one that I did put up, I put up two links there in the chat. One of them is a link to that video. And the other one is a link to the Adobe Creative Educator program, which is just brilliant. We only launched it in June, July last year, and we've already got close to 16,000 teachers who have joined and just, it's incredible. That level one of the program is, I've done the course a few times now and I'll, I'll talk a bit more about it later. I just love the fact that we've got experts from all over the world who are experts in creativity in education, not experts in Adobe, experts in creativity in education, all sharing their inspiration and ideas in this course. It's just brilliant. You don't, you don't have to know anything about Adobe to do the course, but part of the course is involved uh, learning a bit about Spark so that you can at least get introduced to the world of Adobe tools. Let me just share my screen again as we finish this chapter, just to let you know that the Adobe Creative Cloud has actually been available in uh, Victorian Department of Education and training secondary schools now for about three years. Every Victorian Department of Education and training school you get it as a centralised deal so that the schools don't have to opt in or, or pay anything actually. So it's a wonderful, wonderful deal that Victoria have got. New South Wales, it's one step better, it's every school. It's every 2,430 schools, <laughs> the second largest education system in the world, they all have full access to the Adobe Creative Cloud and they have for eight years. It's been one of our strongest education partners uh, worldwide. And of course, in other sectors and regions such as South Australia, it's available in most independent Catholics and government schools through an opt-in arrangement, uh, through an enterprise agreement where you get a really good price based on the numbers of licenses that you've, you've purchased. Now, I, I don't deal with the sales side, so I don't know much at all, but if you've got questions about that side of it, fire them away and I'll refer you off to people who know more about it. Just to give you an example of how they're being used across the schooling, this is a great example of how some of our video tools, in this case, Spark Video, Premiere Rush and Premiere Pro, are being used in primary, middle school and, and in high school. I really quite like this diagram because it, it, it shares a progression of how our tools can be used within the curriculum, in a range of curriculum. And I, I'm particularly proud of the fact that I'm working probably more with English and humanities teachers these days than I am with IT, media and arts teachers, which is just fantastic because it's great to see how English teachers are realising that it's much more than the traditional literacies that they need to teach and multimodal is really important. And so when they're asking their students to create essays, that's important too, but then to turn those essays into a multimodal text with something like Spark Page or Spark Video or even Premiere Rush, it's just awesome to see that happening. If you need any help or assistance, we've got a one-stop shop for teachers and students. So this isn't the Adobe Education Exchange, which is just for teachers. This is for anybody at all. It's called the Adobe Help Centre, helpx.adobe.com. 
and I'll try to remember to put that link in the chat after we stop the recording. Uh, and you can get access to getting tutorials and support information on any one of the Creative Cloud applications through this particular portal. So I highly recommend you bookmark that because that's a great one-stop shop for you. So that's, that ends that chapter. The next chapter, we're going to be looking at Spark Post. And we're actually going to be creating a poster together and uh, we'll be starting that chapter very soon. with the Department for Education. We've had a little look, an overview of what is the Creative Cloud, and now we're going to do a deep dive into one of the many, many applications that are part of the Creative Cloud. And this is Spark Post. Let me share my screen, and you can see my little title here. Spark Post is available on any browser except Internet Explorer. It just doesn't seem to work very well with that browser. If you go to spark.adobe.com, in the address bar of your browser. That's one way of accessing Spark. Another way of accessing Spark is actually through the Adobe Creative Cloud desktop app, which many of you probably already have access to. So I'm just going to bring that up onto the screen. And I'm on a Mac, so up the top is my desktop cloud icon. On a Windows machine, it'll be down the bottom right-hand corner somewhere. Otherwise, just go searching for your Adobe Creative Cloud desktop app. And once you're in there, this is how you manage all of your apps. It really depends on how your school wants you to manage it. Some IT departments like to close everything right down and not allow teachers or students to have any control at all. So maybe they need to control everything for you, which would be a shame. But for more and more schools these days, they're allowing you to uh, actually control what's on your laptop and what's not on your laptop and your desktop. You'll notice that I've actually installed just about every application. In fact, I think I have installed every application, which is why it says open, 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 open with all of the Creative Cloud applications. For many of you, it'll say install, 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 install. And you can, you can install and you can uninstall any way you want to, which is really cool. To get onto the Spark tools, they're not actually full on professional applications. They're part of our web resources. So at the top center, and I'll just highlight this, a little bit. I'm just going to activate another little green pointer app here. And you can see we've got desktop, mobile, and web. I'll just jump to mobile first so you can get a sense of what the mobile apps are like. There's lots of them. Most of them are free, available on iOS, and many of them on Android, not all of them. And this is a way of getting onto the Spark apps as well as separate mobile applications. Spark Video, Spark Page, and Spark Post. Now, if you are an iOS user or an Android user, Spark is available on both of those systems. And it's a wonderful way of just creating really simple little social graphics or, or posters on your phone, on your tablet. Most people tend to use it on their browser, but it's nice to know that it's also available as a mobile. Let's jump to the web section up the top center where it says web. And you can see here where it says Spark and launch. When I click on launch, that is another way of getting me into Adobe Spark. And it's launched on a separate screen, so I'm going to bring it over now. And because I've already logged in, it's going straight into my project page. I'm going to assume, I'm going to close that now. I'm going to assume you haven't already logged in. So I'm going to bring in a Chrome browser. And I'm going to type in the address bar Spark adobe.com and I'd like you to do the same. Spark, make sure it's in the address bar, not the search engine, not the search part, but the address bar, spark.adobe.com. And once you've typed in spark.adobe.com, you should get to a login section. It might actually say, it might, if it's your first time, that there might be a little bit of a, a tutorial or something that comes up. See if you can close that, you don't need that. What you do need, though, is the, um, the login page. For most of you, if you know you've got an enterprise agreement with Adobe at your school, you will go to log in with school account, put in your normal school credentials, your email address, and then you'll be invited to go through your school federated ID system into Spark that way, so that the school manages all of the contact details and all of your data and everything is managed through the school. If you know your school hasn't, you can still access Spark through Google, Facebook, Apple, or through an Adobe ID. If you want to create an Adobe ID, a free Adobe ID, you can. 
by clicking sign up with email. So there's all your options to get into Spark. And it's the same on your mobile device too. Once you're in, you're logged in, you're in. And you're in for a long time, but you do need to make that initial login process work. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna log in with my school account. I'm gonna put in my email address. I'm gonna click continue. I've got two accounts. I'm gonna jump into my school or my company account. And because I work at Adobe, I might have to go through a second layer of security here. Like it's ramping up now. You're probably already in as I speak. I'm just gonna go through this second level. If you're already in now, you might find there's a, again, another bit of a tutorial or something. Just see if you can close that down and I will, I will be with you in a sec. I'm just responding to this extra bit of security on my phone, taking its time. Always takes its time when I'm live. Oh, I push, that's why. Here we go. That took, wasn't very long. All right, so I've gone into my second level of security. And now I am in Spark. Cool. Now, what you're looking for, if you can get to a page that has this plus symbol here, that's what we're looking for. And I believe I've even seen it on the right hand side of the screen somewhere uh, with people who have gone in for the first time. If you're, if you're seeing some advertising or if you're seeing a, a tutorial, close that down look for the plus symbol because that's what you click to activate all the things that you can create with Adobe Spark. I'll talk about the rest of this page a little bit later, but what I'd like you to do right now is click on the plus symbol and note that Instagram story, Instagram post, Facebook post, collage, and I'm gonna skip the next two, branded graphics, custom size graphics, they're all Spark Post. They're all part of the application called Spark Post, which is a, a desktop publishing tool. Web page, that is Spark Page, and video, that's Spark Video. So on those separate mobile apps, that's how you'd get them in your browser. And you could start working on your browser and then keep working on your mobile device because you've logged, as long as you've logged into the same account, because it's cloud-based, you can access it and keep working on any device uh, that you're working on. That's the beauty of working with Spark. What we're gonna do, we're gonna start by creating a poster or a flyer. If you can find the flyer option, click on that, and then it'll start to open up and we'll see our stage and we'll be able to start creating our flyer. I'm gonna stop recording now because there's some, Tanya's having some issues on the chat, so I'm gonna see if I can help her. And the next chapter, we're actually gonna jump into Spark Post and actually start creating something. Chapter four, we've already opened up Spark Post. We've learned how to access all the Spark tools through a browser and how to access them, I guess, on, on a mobile device too, although I haven't specifically done that. We're working with the browser option for the moment. I'm gonna share my screen and see where we're up to. And you can see a blank stage at the moment, sort of in a, um, a portrait mode, uh, if you like. And we're gonna create a flyer in that particular resolution. Let's have a look at some of the options here. One of the things I really love about Spark are these fantastic templates that appear on the left-hand side as I'm scrolling through them. And the simplest way to get a Spark post created really quickly is to grab someone else's design and just remix it. It's that simple. You can literally click on any one of these designs that you like, just change the text, change the image, your post is done. It's that simple. But for this workshop, what I'm gonna do is avoid the templates and I'm gonna work with just a blank page. And I'm gonna start with some text. And at the top left-hand corner, you can see under templates, there's the T text tool. When you click on the text tool and then activate it, then it gives you again another range of templates for your text which look pretty cool if you like one you can click on it and work with it or you can just go add your text which is what i'm going to do and then type in the actual text and my flyer you can do a flyer on anything that you like within reason because we are going to share them later hopefully uh, i'm going to do one on creativity in education so i'm going to say creativity is so important. That's my statement for my flyer. 
Now I'm going to click Done. And then that text will appear on my stage and I can move it anywhere I want to on the screen, which is quite cool. But one of the things I love about Spark Post is this tool down the bottom right hand corner called Find a New Style. That tool appears when you're in text mode. And as I click that button, look what's happening to my text. I'm getting ideas, I'm getting inspiration, I'm getting different ways of presenting that text in different creative options. And if I like one of them, I can stick with it. If I don't like it, I can always undo and go backwards. I'm going to stick with this one just for the moment. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger by clicking the little bubbles on the side, the little handles on the side. And I'm going to rotate it slightly by clicking the little rotation tool. So that way, I'm reasonably happy with my design. Not necessarily happy with the font or the colors. So I'm going to jump over to the right hand side and I can see where I can change my fonts if I want to. And I can change my size. And underneath those, I can align to the center, to the left, to the right. I can even adjust the opacity. So I've got all the basic tools that you need for a desktop publishing solution are sitting there waiting for me to work with. Uh, let's have a look at the colors too. I'll click on text color. It's giving me a palette to work with. I might just change the color into that one. And then I could work with some other of that palette a little bit later. I've got the option here of fine tuning that. Look at all the different shades of that particular color I can work with. If you know anything about hexadecimal coding, you can even type in your, your code that you have registered for your school or your company or whatever. And so you can do that as well, which is rather handy. Lots of flexibility. So that's my text. Let's add an image now. I'm going to go to the left hand side and under text where it says photos, I'm going to click on photo and this panel appears, which gives me lots of options to manage my images and get my images into the page, uh, the post, I should say. The first option is to upload a photo. Now I can click that as long as I've got an image on my device, I can bring that onto my stage, which is handy. But there's a couple of issues that you need to be aware of. Some of you will be well aware of them already and probably have predicted what I'm about to say. The image, first of all, do you own the rights to that image? Is it an image that you have created yourself or you know is royalty free and creative commons? Because if it's not, you really shouldn't be using it. If you've just grabbed any image from Google and using it, you're probably breaching copyright rules. 95% of all images on Google are actually copyrighted. In fact, 100% are. They're actually owned by Google and the person who created them. So it's best to avoid doing that and tell your students to do this too. Don't just go to Google Images and grab anything and use it because that really isn't the right thing to do. Which is why, oh, the other thing to keep in mind if you're uploading a photo is make sure the photo is fairly low res. So if the photo is like three or four megabytes in size, don't use that because this poster is going to be uploaded online. You want to have a very low res image. And one of the best applications to use to reduce the memory size of an image is Photoshop. And I'll point you to some tutorials on Photoshop that'll do that later. I might need to be reminded though. So <laughs> just remind me because that's really cool. But because that's a little bit technical and because I probably worried some of you about copyright issues, we've created this little button here called Find Free Photos. And I love this tool. When you click on it and you do a search, I'm going to do a search for creativity. It's now searching for a whole lot of images that are royalty free, that are creative commons that you can use for any project that you're in. And my favorite one is this one here. It's a startup stock photo. So that's where it's coming from. And I love this photo. I'm going to bring this into my poster. I love this because these two young people are obviously working with Adobe Spark. Look at the reactions on their faces. You can just tell how engaged they are. So I've got that image now in there. I could rotate it slightly if I wanted to to match the text. And that looks pretty cool. I'm happy with that. Notice now that I'm in photo mode, I've got a few options here on the right hand side. I can replace the photo. I can remove the background if there is one. I can add it. I'll talk about backgrounds in a sec. I can add filters, enhancements, blurs, a lot of the things. I can even crop and reshape the image. A lot of the things that you're looking for 
in a desktop publishing solution for image manipulation are sitting there on the right hand side. Let's talk about backgrounds. I'm going to go to the left hand side again and I could bring in icons. There's lots of royalty free icons that you can bring in, uh, design assets. Let's go to backgrounds. And in backgrounds, there's a whole range of royalty free backgrounds that we've got here that you can work with. I'm going to just quickly choose something fairly neutral. I'll grab this paint one here. And this background is now appearing as an image. So I'm going to make it the size of my poster. And then go to the right hand side and click the button Add to Background. And now it's sitting in the background. Um, I think I can probably do a little bit more with this. I'm going to go to maybe in the blur options here and just blur it a little bit. Yeah, that's better. Just blurring it out. So. I'm a little bit happier with that now. So I'm pretty happy with the design of my poster. I'm going to stop the chapter now while you're working on your posters. And in the next chapter, we're going to have a go at exporting the, actually, no, I'm going to have a go at animating some of it first because that's a brand new feature that's come into the browser version. It's been around in the mobile version for a while, but I want to spend some time helping people who might be struggling at this point. And then we'll have a look at the animation feature in the next chapter. Five now of this webinar. Uh, chapter four was getting our text and our images in place on our stage to make it look good. And I'll just share my, well, I'm still sharing my screen so you can see what we've created already. Um, what a, a new feature, which I'm pretty excited about actually, which has only been available on the mobile version of Spark Post up until recently, is the animation tool. And if I go to the right hand side of the screen, you can see where it says animation. If I click on animation, we've got options here to animate the text. And if we scroll down, we can animate the photo. If I go to say typewriter as an option, it's now creating a typewriter effect on our text or a dynamic effect, which isn't going to work for me really that much. A flicker effect, that looks pretty cool, and so on. So that's the text animation. If I go down to the photo animation, I can Zoom in or I can pan out. Change the color it looks like, yes. The zoom. So what you might be thinking to yourself now is, what's the point of having an animation when I'm creating a poster, creating a flyer? Well, the point is now you don't have to save it as just a still image. You can now have the option of saving it as both a still image or a little video file. And that's pretty cool because if you wanted your poster to have a little bit more engagement to it, you could then upload it as a little video file and then bring it into whatever learning management system you're working with or email it out or put it on your Facebook account. Whatever it is you're working with as your online tool, just to have it as a little animation adds to the engagement levels which is pretty cool and it probably leads now to how to do the animation, uh, sorry, how to do the export. But I'll do that as a separate chapter. I'm just going to stop the recording now and see if anyone needs any help or wants to ask any questions about anything else to do with Spark Post before we go ahead and actually finish our uh, export our projects. Uh, chapter six, and this is all about exporting, getting our final project that we've created in literally just a few seconds, making it either a JPEG, a PNG file, a PDF file, or a little animated video. So they're all our exporting options. Let's have a go and see what we can do. I'm going to share my screen again. Now, we can see what I've created here. We can see it's animation. At the top right hand corner, we've got a few options here. I'm going to just show you this one first. This one, when you click on it, it's your invitation tool. And what it allows you to do is actually invite someone else to collaborate with you. 
So Spark Post, and this is also in Spark Page and Spark Video, can become a collaboration tool. You can get a group of people working on the same project, the same poster, the same video, the same web page, depending on the Spark tool you're working on. So that's really handy and well worth knowing about. I'm gonna just close that for a moment. So that's the invitation tool. Next to the invitation tool, we've got our download tool. And if I click on the download tool, you'll see the options. This option of an MP4 video will only appear if you've added animation. If you haven't added animation, you're just gonna get the PNG, JPEG and PDF options. I would like to save it as a video, but also as a JPEG. So I'm going to keep that ticked as MP4 video and click Start Download. And what happens now, hang tight, we're exporting your video. It's basically packaging everything that you've created, including all the animations. It's sending it up to one of our video servers and it'll come back at, into your downloads folder as an MP4 video file. See the blue line, tell you how long it will take to do that. And it should be ready any second. But I can see it's ready because down the bottom left hand corner, indicated my post MP4 is ready for me to have a look at. I could click on that button there and it'll take me to it. But I just wanna show you where it is on a Mac. And this is very similar on a Windows as well. If I go to my finder, I'm a little bit slow at the moment, I hope be a problem. Uh, if I go to my downloads section on my Mac, just like on a Windows machine too, you'll have a download section. And you can see at the top, the most recent product is my post. And if I open that up, I'll just see what I can open it up with. I'll open it up with QuickTime, that'll be good. And thinking, come on to a different screen. So I'm gonna move it on to screen so you can see it. Let's make it a little bit smaller. And now when I hit the play button, there's my little video. Now there's no audio in this video, it's just literally a little video. In QuickTime I could loop that, there's other media players that'll do that, so just on a constant loop. But that gives you a sense of how that poster has been turned into a little MP4 video, which is rather cool. Of course, if you wanted music on that, then we would actually bring that little MP4 video file into Spark Video to add music, add voiceovers, that's all for the next session on March the 4th, I think, from memory, uh, when we talk about Spark Video. So hang on tight for that and uh, invite your colleagues to actually join me as well, as well, because it's really, these are great tools for any teacher in any curriculum area, not just for arts and IT and media. We're talking about any curriculum area. So that is how to export as a video file. Same process now to export as a, JPEG, I'm gonna click the download button at the top right hand corner and I could choose PNG, which would be a slightly higher resolution and a higher, a larger memory size. So if I was gonna print it out, I would choose PNG or PDF as two very high quality uh, image files that I can put into a printer and then print it out as a poster and get a good result. If I'm gonna communicate it online through a learning management system or through email or through any other online tool, I would click JPEG. What I'm gonna do now, click download, start download. And any second now, I'll just jump to my downloads again. Let's see, I was thinking about it now, and there it is, there's my JPEG. Let me open that up with Apple's preview. So it'll open up pretty quickly rather than Photoshop, which will take a little while to open up. I'm having some sluggish, some latency issues. So it is very warm at the moment in Melbourne and I've got a fan, you might be able to hear it. I've got a fan going in the background. So just, it'll be all good. So it's now appeared on a different screen. I'm gonna bring that across and there we go, folks. That is my JPEG image of my poster. Looking pretty good. In fact, I'd, I'd probably even be able to print that as well because um, the quality is pretty good. So I'll close that down. And we'll show you one more way of exporting. 
And that's through the button that's next to the download button, which is the share button. And when you click the share button on the top right hand corner, you've got the option of uh, publishing it or sending it to Google Drive. If you're a Google school, then that, that's probably a really good option for you. If I go to publish, this is also another really good option for you. It's going to ask me where do I want to publish it to? Do I want to publish it to Facebook, to Twitter, to Google Classrooms, to Microsoft Teams? Do I want to email it? Or do I want to just create a hyperlink that I can then put into my LMS or anywhere else? I'm going to do that. I'm going to click the link tool. And it's now generating everything that I've created, sending it to not a video server, but one of our web servers. And any second now in five, four, three, two, 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 one. I think my daughter's got Netflix on at the moment. That's probably why things are it's going to be there any second now. Two, one. Oh, don't fail me now. Usually around this time that things start slowing down. All the kids have got home. It's now nearly five o'clock in Melbourne and uh, kids are home. They've got Netflix on, they've got YouTube on. And so the internet is a little bit slow at this time of the afternoon. Any second now, we're going to be seeing a URL. Any second now, I'm sure. Come on. Normally it doesn't take this long. I apologize. It'd be working there. It's probably worked for you already. Rachel has sent a Google Drive link with hers, which is lovely. Thank you, Rachel. There we go. Oh, that took ages. I don't think I've ever had to wait that long before. There's probably a few issues happening, so hopefully I won't crash on you. Anyway, I'm going to copy that link now. I'm going to put it into the chat so that this will prove to you how this works. So this could be the chat. It could be a um, LMS that I'm putting it into. If you click on that link that I've put it into the chat, then you'll be able to see what I've just created because I've shared it through the cloud. So I'm going to stop the recording of this chapter and I'm going to ask you now to do exactly what I just did. And I want you to post in the chat your links, what you've created, and share them with everyone who's with us at the moment. Now for this webinar with the South Australian Department for Education on Adobe Spark Post, and of course earlier the overview of the Creative Cloud. I'm just going to share my screen and we're going to share some resources. Or was I sharing my screen? I already was, guys. Make sure I'm sharing the right screen. I am having a few little technical hiccups here, but hopefully this is all going okay. We've had a look at Spark Post. It's one of three applications, as I said earlier, and you can access all of them. In our next session on the 4th of March, we're going to be looking at Spark Video, and that gets really, really exciting. Uh, what I'd like to share with you now is actually a series of tutorials that I've created on all the Spark products. Let's bring them onto a different screen. I'm going to grab the link of those tutorials and put it into the chat. And uh, these, I'll call them Edu Tips. And these are specifically, oh, I'll just get the full URL and put it into the chat for those who are still with us live. And th this will be helpful because basically everything that I've shown you is available here uh, in the Spark Post tutorial on the browser section. There's also an iOS tutorial as well if you're more interested in the mobile version. And then there's tutorials on Spark Video and on Spark Page. There's also a little animated uh, video that I've created with Rob the Robot with Character Animator. That's an overview of Adobe Spark that you might like to share with your students to get them in, in, encouraged and involved. All of these videos can be downloaded as video files in case your school doesn't allow you to access Vimeo, which is where they're stored. So you've got that as an option as well. I do want to play another video for you. And I'll just stop sharing now because we've got these resources called Kickstarter resources that we've, uh, as a bit of a, uh, a program to kickstart the academic year for 2021. And this video that I'm about to hopefully play will give you 
more of an overview of what the Kickstarter program is about. As a teacher, you have a lot on your plate. If you're finding it a challenge to integrate creativity and digital literacy into your classes, you're certainly not alone. Adobe is here to help with a set of Kickstarters that you can use to inspire your students' creativity, their critical thinking, their creative problem solving and collaboration skills in any class. In these hands-on projects, your students will create images, graphics, videos and other digital media as they explore texts, interpret source material, explain complex concepts and more. Explore these Kickstarters to engage your students while improving their learning outcomes. Sorry, folks, I realised my mute wasn't working. Sorry about that. Thank you. Oh, dear. It's a, it's a slight delay. Every time I click, there's about a half a second before things actually work. So I just got a little bit excited. And just bear with it. And then we'll be finishing very soon. I'll just bring in the link to the Kickstarter resources. And above those uh, messages is the link to that video. Well worth sharing with your colleagues and lots of really great ideas of how to use the Creative Cloud tools in a range of curriculum areas. All right, to wind things up, let me just share my screen again. And this is the Adobe Education Exchange, which I'm very excited about because we're about to get one million teachers as members of this incredible uh, portal, this incredible resource. It's Teachers Helping Teachers. I'm just bringing it up on a separate screen so I can grab the URL and put it into the chat. And I highly encourage you all to join. It's a free join, there's no cost involved at all, and other than your time, obviously. Uh, but uh, you might be the millionth, <laughs> who knows, you could be the millionth member of the Education Exchange. Great resources for distance learning, curriculum partners that we include the Khan Academy, got a lovely relationship with the Khan Academy. Pixar, uh, Pixar, fantastic company we've been collaborating with, some fantastic resources in a program called Pixar in a Box. And a group called Better Lessons, which is a curriculum based uh, organisation that have produced some outstanding resources for teachers. Lots of self-paced courses. It's, it's really worth getting to know the Adobe Education Exchange. I mentioned at the start of the session, the Adobe Creative Educators Program. I'm gonna grab the link of that one as well and put that into the chat. It's a community that we only just started, as I said earlier, in June, July last year. And already we've got 16,000 teachers onto level one. And that's just awesome because it's, it's, it really is a fantastic program. And I highly encourage you all, it only takes about an hour or so to do the course. I must admit that when I did it for the first time, it took me three hours because I actually loved the content so much. I kept pausing, taking notes, re-watching bits and pieces because of the incredible inputs from experts in education creativity from around the world. It's a fabulous course. It's one of my favorite courses on the Adobe Education Exchange. So that's the Adobe Creative Educator program. You'll get a badging, you'll get to uh, be labelled as an Adobe Creative Educator level one, and uh, that is something well worth not just you doing, but encouraging your colleagues to do it as well. And finally, I do a show every second Wednesday night. So not this week, but next Wednesday will be the next episode. And the show involves a guest teacher and a guest thought leader at each episode. It goes for about 45 minutes to an hour and it's live on the Adobe for Education YouTube channel. And I will bring the link up onto the screen if I am able to without 
too much of a delay so that you can see it. Otherwise, just go to there's a bit.ly slash Adobe dash inject and you can get more information about it there. And it's taking far too long. So I'm going to cheat and give you the long URL rather than the short URL. And there it is. Dark page that I've created about the show. That's coming into the chat now. There you go. And that gives you some more information about the Inject Creativity Live show, which is a lot of fun. So 6.30 at Australian Eastern Standard Time. So that'll be 6 o'clock your time, I would assume. And uh, we are well worth watching. If you can't watch it live, you can always watch the recording later on on the YouTube channel. Lastly, we don't grow into creativity, according to Sir Ken Robinson, who sadly passed away last August. We grow out of it, or rather we get educated out of it. And my challenge to you as teachers is to try to make sure that doesn't happen with your students. Try to make sure every time your students are in your classes, they're encouraged to be creative. They're encouraged to creatively construct their learning and to be inspired by the digital tools that are around them, be engaged in the learning process. And by using something like Spark Post, it can be a really uh, amazing trigger of engagement and creativity for students of all ages. So let me encourage you to, to do that as much as you possibly can. Teachers work tirelessly to bring students amazing learning experiences, and Adobe is here to help you be successful. So there's a, a contact Form. If you want to be on my newsletter, if you want to, if you're not already on my new email list and you want to get my monthly newsletter, uh, yeah, literally once a month you'll get an email from me with a link to the newsletter. In fact, the newsletter is part of that email. There's a QR code there which takes you to that link if you prefer that. Uh, so I encourage you to join that so you can keep up to date with all the things that we do in the world of Adobe in education. Our next session for the South Australian Department for Education is Thursday, the 4th of March. It'll be titled Making Great Videos in Minutes with Spark Video. Hope to see you. If you haven't been able to join us live, I hope to see you then live. And uh, I'm going to have a chat with the people who are with me live now, and uh, I'll catch up with the rest of you another time. All the best. Bye-bye.